Hey there, so I want to talk to you about why this $35 capture card is better than the $150 capture card that I've been using for a few years now. See, I have the Avermedia Live Gamer Ultra. This thing can record gameplay all the way up to 4K, 30 FPS. It'll even pass through high refresh rate displays at 1080p and 1440p, and it'll even do HDR. But the problem is, there are some devices that this thing just will not work with. A perfect example is my current phone. This is the Motorola Edge 2024. This is the US version of it. Some of you might recognize it as the Motorola Edge 50. Well, one great thing about this phone is that it has this feature where you can use the phone to display out and you can have a full desktop experience here where it, it goes to the resolution of whatever display you're using so this is just a 1080p 60 hertz display but i have used this all the way up to 1440p displays and i've gotten 120 hertz out of them this is a really great feature that i wanted to highlight in a video related to this phone i'm currently working on that a problem that i ended up having is that how do i capture this so i put together a setup like this here we have the motorola edge on a usb-c dock this usb-c dock is designed more for things like the steam deck and the rog ally so it kind of has this uh this part in it where you're meant to put the devices in i kind of just plop the phone down in there plug in the usb-c and it pretty much works so we have display out coming from here over a hdmi cable to this external OLED monitor. Pretty much the perfect setup if I wanted to start recording some gameplay off of this phone and have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio so I don't end up with black bars anywhere. Unfortunately I ran into problems when I tried to throw this capture card into the mix. So here's just a rough demonstration of the setup that I had in mind. Here of course we have the smartphone that is hooked up to the capture card and the capture card is displaying out to the display there and of course the capture card is plugged into this laptop here just so that i can show you what the general idea of how this was going to be set up was going to be pretty simple overall the problem comes when i pull up obs and i get this hdcp error here what hdcp is is it's essentially just copyright protection that is put on some devices so that you can't just easily hook up a capture card and start recording netflix if you ever tried to use a capture card with a playstation 3 or a playstation 4 you might have run into this problem. Now console devices will usually let you disable it, at least the modern ones do. I know the PlayStation 3 was a lot more of a problem to get this off, but there are some issues there. Some devices that let you turn off HDCP protection will still be very finicky in terms of display out. Other devices will not even give you an option at all to turn it off, and unfortunately that is the case here with this Motorola phone. There is just no way to turn off the HDCP protection and this is not the first time that i've run into a device that does not let me turn it off the asus rog ally handheld device is a device that i actually used with this dock before but i was never able to get the display out to work if i went into the amd driver settings and disabled hdcp protection on there like i do on every other mini pc that i've tested the setting would apply in the driver but as soon as the system would reboot after you enable or disable the HDCP setting, it would just revert it back on. It has to do with some way that Asus has configured the device because it really doesn't happen. It doesn't turn on the HDCP protection until I am past the boot screen on Windows, which means it's once the Asus software is loaded up that it gets turned back on. But you can't really use an ROG Ally without the Asus software. Luckily, I found this $30 capture card that could do this. And now I have video out, it's working perfectly. This capture card is able to display the footage perfectly fine. That $35 capture card is able to do what a $150 capture card could not. And from what I can find online, even those 250 PCIe capture cards cannot do this. Now I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say that this is the greatest capture card of all time. Even though it says 4K on it, it has 4K bypass, but it only captures up to 1080p 60. That's perfectly fine for me because of the fact that I really wanted this just to be able to capture phone 
phones and the ROG Ally when I get the ROG Ally X and really whatever other devices that would end up causing me problems. Usually I stick to 1080p gameplay anyway, so this isn't a problem for me. If you're trying to live stream, that's not really a problem. But if you want 4K, if you want 1440p, if you want high refresh rate, if you want HDR, you're not going to get that here. But like I said, it does do 1080p 60 and that's really all you need for things like live streaming and most gameplay related things, especially when it comes to a smartphone like this. So I'll leave that capture card link down below if you're like me and you're trying to make content like this or you want to be able to live stream your game on whatever service that you want and not run into these issues because without this you would essentially have to set a camera right in front of the smartphone and use it like that and if you're trying to use the touch controls you're really not going to be able to do that so i'll drop a link to this capture card down below i definitely recommend picking one up even if you already have a high-end capture card because it's a great pair for it if you are ever in those situations where you run into a device that does not let you bypass that HDCP protection, this will be able to handle that. You won't be able to get the highest quality footage out of it, but at least you're able to get the footage out of it. And the $35 capture card that can get the footage is better than the $250 capture card that can't. But I'll catch you guys in the next one.